my 29m parents 60f 61m want me to reach out to my no contact sister 27s and it blew up yesterday yesterday i 29m backslash met my parents 60f 61m backslash for a hike with my wife, 28F backslash. As we were hiking, my dad and I got a bit ahead of my mom and wife and he brought up a topic we've been circling for a few weeks. They want me to reach out to my estranged sister for them. My sister, 27S backslash, has been estranged from our family for over a year. My sister has suffered from severe depression since we were teenagers. My parents not having any previous experience with depression did, in my opinion, the best they could. They took her to therapy, tried antidepressants, and my mom was especially always a listening ear. Were they perfect? Definitely not. But they made a conscious effort to help her get to a better place. Since her teenage years their relationship has always been rocky. Personally, it wasn't until I went to college and had a suicidal roommate that I really began to develop a true understanding slash empathy toward mental illness. When we were kids my sister could be very aggressive and cruel towards me so I began distancing myself as we got older. Our relationship was never great, but was really bad throughout middle slash high school. It wasn't until we had both graduated college that we really started talking and attempting to foster a relationship. Our early adult relationship went in ebbs and flows of talking. To be frank, it's always been a bit of walking on eggshells with her. We'd be having a pleasant conversation, but after 15 minutes it'd go sour really quick. I was never sure what I could say or talk about with her even though I'd try to establish triggers and topics we should avoid. A few years ago she started opening up to me about our childhood and wanted me to confirm that our parents were abusive people. I told her I couldn't agree with that experience and that I had a great relationship with mom and dad. I told her though that I understand we may have had different experiences of the same situations and I would listen to her and be there to talk if she need. For the next few years, we'd have the occasional conversation about, do you think mom and dad are abusive now? What about this situation? It all exploded after a family vacation to my uncle's ranch house. We all agreed to bring food, had rented a boat at a nearby lake, etc. She didn't bring food, slept in extremely late every day and make us late to scheduled activities, was very cruel to her boyfriend and his family in front of us, and picked fights with almost everyone in attendance. After we all went home my mom called her and let her know that her behavior was very frustrating for all of us and to see what her deal was. You can guess how that conversation went. My sister called me in tears, begging me to admit that they were abusive and terrible parents. I told her again that I couldn't agree with, but respect her emotions slash her different experiences and was there for her to talk slash listen it out. We went back and forth for a while, but eventually I suggested that she just take a breather and give herself some time to cool off and heal. Maybe a month or two of minimal or no contact with them to figure out a plan and talk with them. She said she'd sleep on it. The next day I get a text that she doesn't want to talk with me anymore and she regrets our conversation. My parents got something similar. Over the course of the last year-ish I've had to deal with daily and weekly phone calls about her with my parents. I finally got my parents to go therapy. Thank God, and I felt everything was moving in the right direction. While I wish I could be there for my sister in a more active way, without having to condemn my parents, I really hope this time for her has been healing and that she's finding a healthier way to live, even if it doesn't include us. Go so back to the hike. My dad had been hinting that he wants me to try and contact her for a few weeks, but he thought our marsh hike would be the appropriate time to bring it up. I tell him that I don't think it's a good idea to reach out and force a conversation. We know from two older cousins of mine that my sister is still alive and doing her own thing. He starts getting a bit loud and talking over me, and I ask him to slow down and listen to me for a minute. I say, she asked us to not contact her so I want to respect her wishes and that if she does decide she wants to talk with us I want her to feel like she can trust me. Part of that trust in my opinion is respecting her wishes. So I say I won't do it. My dad lost it like I've never seen him act before. I was completely in shock. He started saying we're, and percent dollar ring dying here and you won't help us. I guess he forgot about the last year, 
I'd do anything for family and you won't try to talk to her for 60 seconds for us, etc. Told him again I don't think it's the right thing to do. I also said what's the plan if she answers the phone? Do I tell her that we miss her and want to talk? Are you ready to apologize to her? Will you fight her and drive her father away? What's the plan? Of course, he didn't have any answers to these questions and continued to rant. I told him that I couldn't talk to him while he was like this and if he wanted to talk like adults he needed to calm down. I want to help them get through this, but this isn't helpful for us or her. Started back down the trail toward the parking lot and bumped into my wife and mother. My mother went to console my dad and my wife and I went a separate way and talked. We all met in the parking lot at the end and he gave me a half apology slash continued talking about it. Tears were shed, more angry comments for said, and eventually I just stopped talking so we all left. My parents have both since texted me apologies and that they feel sick about what happened and to contact them back. It's the first real fight I've ever really had with them so I'm taking some time to meditate on the situation and come back with a clear head. I know they're in deep pain and at the end of their rope with this, but it doesn't excuse my dad's behavior toward me. I can forgive them because I know I have no understanding of the pain of losing a child, but I have to make sure that if I continue to be there for them I'm not treated poorly or breaking my sister's boundaries. How can I backslash 29m backslash, help my parents, 60f slash 61m backslash, navigate having an estranged child, 27f backslash, and get them the help they need before our relationship hits a hard place. How can I take care of myself in this situation better? Too long didn't read, I, 29m, have an estranged sister, 27f backslash. There is a lot of history and difficult issues. My parents, 60f slash 61m backslash, want me to contact her for them, but I said no because I want to respect her wishes. My dad blew up at me and I'm trying to understand how to proceed with our relationship slash family troubles. Edit, since I've gotten a few messages about this I want to clarify, I've never told my sister that her feelings of abusive are invalid. I've shared with her that I respect what she has shared with me but I can't validate experiences for her since I don't share the same shared experience of abuse from our parents. I've told her I don't feel like I was abused and I don't see our parents as abusive, but respect that she has a different experience and won't attempt to convince her otherwise. Edit within the edit, I also can't validate for my parents that they weren't abusive parents. They weren't to me, but they were to my sister. There is no right answer just what they're willing to choose to accept and acknowledge for themselves. I can't be the bridge for my sister's abuse or my parents' non-abuse. That is journey they can only discover between the three of them and I need to get out. Abuse can take a lot of different faces and because a person doesn't feel abused doesn't mean it didn't happen to someone else. I do think abuse and a person being an abuser is a very nuanced thing and it varies greatly between people's individual experiences. I don't consider my parents intentionally abusive people but people who are capable of committing abusive acts. Whereas my sister experienced things that would make them intentional abusers to her. In a similar vein, my sister is the same, she abused me as a kid, maybe out of anger, maybe out of spite, maybe because she was a struggling kid who just needed to lash out. I personally don't consider her my abuser, at least not anymore now that I've healed and grown. I pity her and know she has struggled for a long time. I know I've probably been a bully or abuser to a different person at least once if not more than once in my life. We all abuse each other in society because we've all been abused and spread our anger, pain, frustration on each other in known and unknown ways. I think the label of abuser and the quick calls to abandon people because of a situation can be rash, obviously it depends on the severity of the situation and those involved. I'm not going to cut my parents off, but I do need to establish stronger boundaries with them so I'm not in the middle of of this situation any longer. I need to continue to support my sister by not contacting her and letting her find her own healing process and peace, even if it means I never talk with her again. Finally, I do want to say thank you to everyone who has commented, shared their personal story, and challenged my comments slash post. This is a much more intimate slash detailed situation than a single Reddit post can solve and deal with. I appreciate the kind words, the tough words, 
and everything in between. It's a lot to process and has helped me formulate some of my thoughts and given me new questions to ask myself. While I have this mini stage I'll just say this, be good, be patient, be kind to one another. We all can be better to one another if we stay aware and allow ourselves to accept change in front of us. Do you have any examples of what she said was abusive? Bits and pieces, but a lot of it was her trying to get me to agree that I saw our parents as abusive too. Some of the things she mentioned was them not understanding her depression and the way they treated her boyfriends. I feel sad for Op that a lot of people are poking holes in his life story when he's the one who has been going to therapy and been keeping really level-headed this whole discussion. Stick to what you know to be true since this has been what you have reflected, meditated, and gone to therapy for. You're doing a great job keeping those boundaries. Parents can be abusive even though they only want what's best for the child and although we should hold them responsible for that I really be alive that most parents aren't intentional with abuse. From personal experience, my mom is emotionally, verbally, and physically abusive but I see all of that stems from my grandmother, and her mother. In the end, they are all just victims of the same vicious cycle and I think it's important to recognize that. I respect how you also look at the intent of your parents because we are all just human. We can be their whole sun and stars but still be abused because they were taught tough love. I'd come out your family background but if parents grew up poor and don't want their children to experience the same hardships as they did, most tend to lose sight of what matters to the kid to make sure they succeed. You don't need to help patch things up between your sister and parents and I also believe that it is best for everyone to let go of her and respect her decision. What I think should need patching up is your own mental health as well as your parents. Hope they are consistent with therapy. It sounds like you've been pretty introspective about whether or not your parents were abusive, so I think it's fair to put that aside for now. I think you're doing a great job. You're respecting the boundaries your sister set and you're setting your own boundaries with your parents. I would go further and tell your parents not only will you not contact your sister, but also that she is not a topic of conversation for the three of you to have at all anymore. You can't know what their relationship felt like to the people in it and so this is really between your sister and your parents and it's not fair for them to try to get you to intervene or validate their feelings that they did nothing wrong. I may have missed it, but did your sister ever mention what they did to her that was abusive? I can't be the only one thinking that your sister is narcissistic. She had you walking on eggshells when you were young and everyone else at the family vacation. This is actually abusive behavior from her. In all of the experiences you shared, it's more like your parents want to please her than them being abusive. Now, the way your parents treated you wasn't okay. If your parents manipulated your sister like they tried to manipulate you, then yes, that was not okay either. But here's the thing, your sister is a grown woman who can decide who she wants in her life. Even if she's a narcissist, unstable, or whatever. You're doing the right thing by respecting her no contact wishes. If your parents want to reach out to her, they can do that themselves. They shouldn't use you like that. That was another thing my therapist had mentioned to me. That she may just have narcissistic tendencies. I do think my parents walked on eggshells for years, especially after she moved out, to please her so she'd stay in their lives specifically. She's a very difficult person to maintain a relationship with. She doesn't have any really close friends, but she has a lot of previous friends who don't talk with her anymore frown. I'm getting tired of my friends, all they want to do is get drunk and smoke weed. 19F. Lately, I have been going to a rough time because my sister is really sick she could die. I can't go out because if my sister gets COVID, she couldn't deal with it or fight it. So I'm trying to take care of myself, to take care of her and all my friends want to do is drink or smoke weed. I do not need for them to be constantly checking in with me. I'm okay about my situation but I'm honestly tired that they don't care about anything. I honestly like being alone and don't really need them. I just think we are in different paths right now and they are not adding to my life anymore. They get mad because I don't want to hang out with them but they don't understand that I really can't. They are my only friends and I really love them but I'm just done. I don't know what 
what to do, am I going to regret leaving them? Also, I am dating someone right now, 22M, which is nothing like them, I actually think I fit more with him. We have similar goals and the same way of thinking. What if I leave my friends and then he leaves me? and I'm all alone. Just tired honestly. We have been friends for 5 years now, since high school. Too long didn't read. I'm tired of my friends and want to leave them because they do not care about anything. My girlfriend, 24F, of about 4 years and I, 25M, moving in together. We'd like to have routine relationship checkups. Any advice on what we should include in these checkups? First off, my girlfriend and I are doing awesome. We both agree that we have great communication, we support each other, we have lots of fun, and overall it's a nicely balanced relationship. We just want to have an intentional safe time where we can be completely open and honest with each other. It can be very easy to brush issues under the rug or just simply get too busy to talk about it, so we want to plan out a periodic maybe monthly time where we meet to discuss such things we're thinking things like middle dot how are we both feeling in terms of physical mental spiritual well-being middle dot how are we doing sticking to our financial budget middle dot anything that's been bothering you lately middle dot what are some goals you want for ourselves as individuals and as a couple i want to hear from my fellow redditors what do you think of these types of routine tag ups and what do you suggest we talk about during these discussions thank you and much love to you all too long didn't read do you find it beneficial to have routine discussions with your so what are the most important things to touch on during these discussions?